P&O Arvia is an XL-class cruise ship and the largest ship ever built for the British cruise market. Arvia represents a new era of cruising for P&O cruises, blending innovative design with eco-conscious advancements. Yet amongst the sheen of its size and grandeur on the surface, our journey uncovers a reality far removed from the glossy brochures. With more than 100 cruises under our belt, this is one of the worst cruises we've ever done, and in reality, we wish we had never booked. There is no doubt that Arvia has a design and onboard decor that certainly pushes the boundaries of traditional cruise ships that P&O have operated in the past. The ship's grand atrium, glitzier and more glamorous than its counterpart Iona, is a testament to the line's ambitions for innovation and a new, younger clientele. However, despite its visual appeal, there's an unmistakable sense of soullessness that pervades this space, reminiscent more of an airport lounge than the heart of a beautiful cruise ship. Atriums act as the heart of the ship and usually feel warm, cosy and inviting. That isn't what you get in here though. The panoramic windows that encase the Grand Atrium, flooding the area with natural light and offering breathtaking views of the sea, while stunning, the implementation of the atrium concept reveals a fundamental flaw. The layout on deck 7 and 8 necessitates that guests have to wander through dining areas like the Glasshouse and Keel and Cow to move from one side of the ship to the other. Quite frankly, it feels awkward walking through a restaurant, weaving between tables where fellow passengers are trying to enjoy a meal. With such a high passenger capacity and such a small passenger space ratio, it's no wonder they've tried to maximise space on this ship in any way they can. You'll soon learn what a busy and crowded ship Arvia is, and you'll be able to make a decision fairly quickly whether it's one you wish to try. Accommodation aboard Arvia leaves a lot to be desired. The standard balcony cabin is the most common type of cabin, with nearly 1,400 on board, and it was this type of cabin we called home for our two-week cruise aboard Arvia. On first glance, it looks great, with its fresh and vibrant colour palette designed to complement the sunny shores Arvia visits most of the year. The cabin presents a welcoming retreat, a haven to relax and unwind, but it isn't until you try living in here for two weeks you realise how cumbersome it can be. Standard balcony cabins such as this measure 170 square feet, which significantly lags behind the industry average of 197 square feet for a cruise ship balcony cabin. Balconies vary significantly by size on this ship. Ours was pretty spacious at 50 square feet, however some on board can be as small as 20 square feet which is really tiny. These cabins have the capacity to sleep up to four passengers through use of the sofa bed, a Pullman bed from the ceiling and a double bed which can be converted into twins. However the practicality of accommodating for adults in such a limited space is questionable as the cabin felt cramped with just two of us. Further compounding the issue of space was the inadequate storage provided. The cabin's design includes minimal wardrobe space squeezed into the already narrow walkway by the bed or sofa depending on how the cabin is configured, and a few impractical cupboards with shelves barely deep enough to store folded underwear and socks. The biggest issue with this and other cabins on this ship are the lack of drawers, you won't find a single one which seems absurd and massively exacerbates the impracticality of the cabins on this ship. When it comes to power outlets, while the provision of two British, one European socket and a single USB-A port on one side of the bed is adequate enough for a couple, it becomes impractical for a cabin hosting four guests. The entertainment options, though featuring a large Samsung flat screen TV, felt limited in comparison to the interactive TV systems offered by competitors like Princess, Holland America and Celebrity. Although the decent selection of inclusive movies is a nice touch and mirrors the offerings of similar competitors in the market. The bathroom stands out as a highlight within the standard balcony cabin and lower grades of accommodation including inside and outside cabins. Spacious and well designed, it offers a practical layout a decent sized shower with glass door and thoughtful amenities like white company hand soap and shower gel. Yet even here the absence of drawers and a shaver plug socket was certainly felt 
and will catch plenty of people out. While the standard balcony cabin aboard Arvia may first catch the eye with its aesthetically pleasing decor, the reality of living in here for a longer cruise brings to light its many shortcomings. Cramped, impractical and lacking in necessary storage, the cabin falls short of meeting the needs of the modern cruiser, rendering it a space that, while nice to look at, proves tedious to live in for more than a few days. Main dining on P&O cruises has historically been a highlight, a quintessential part of the cruising experience that many looked forward to, particularly of an evening. However, it is clear that post-pandemic, the experience of main dining has been cut to the bone. Those who have cruised with P&O before the pandemic will likely share our disappointment in how the menus have evolved, or more accurately, regressed, in terms of both variety and quality. The variety that once marked P&O's dining experience seems to have been significantly trimmed. Where menus once burst with options, they now feel restricted, lacking the variety and quality we used to take for granted. Notably, premium options like lobster, which used to be a staple on celebration night, have vanished without trace. This reduction extends beyond mere luxuries. Special menus catering to dietary requirements have also been removed. For those with specific dietary needs, the lack of options can leave you facing a stark choice – eat what's offered or go hungry. Even at breakfast, smoked salmon has been removed from the breakfast menu. This decision not only narrows the breakfast choices but also appears to nudge passengers towards the paid options like Kiel and Cow if they're craving this much-loved crew's favourite. This move is particularly galling when considered that even Mirella ships often seen as offering a more budget-friendly cruise experience, continue to offer smoked salmon at breakfast in their main dining rooms. Comparing what's now on offer in the main dining room with the quality and variety that P&O used to be known for, and what's being offered by many other cruise lines out there, it's hard not to feel a sense of loss. The cuts to the menu not only diminish the dining experience, but also reflect a broader trend of cost-cutting that can't help but impact the overall cruise experience. The Horizon Restaurant, the buffet restaurant aboard P&O Arvia, presents a mixed bag in terms of dining experiences. While breakfast at Horizon tends to hit the mark with a satisfactory range of options, the story takes a turn when we venture into the realms of lunch and dinner. It's here that variety and creativity once celebrated at P&O's buffet offerings start to wane. Lunch and dinner at Horizon seem to orbit around a central theme of roast dinners accompanied by a limited selection of alternatives such as curries. While a good roast can be a comforting staple for Brits, the lack of diversity quickly becomes apparent, particularly on a longer sailing where you don't even want to have to look at another roast potato. This repetition not only diminishes the appeal of dining at Horizon, but also detracts from the overall sense of a premium holiday which is implied through P&O's various marketing campaigns. The predictability and limited scope of its menu stand in contrast to the indulgent offerings you will find with many other cruise lines, and it all feels just very underwhelming. Located on the same deck and also included as part of your cruise fare is Taste 360, P&O's answer to a poolside grill. Taste 360 offers a fair selection of fast food favourites, ranging from burgers and hot dogs to pizza and even some specialities like chowder and fried chicken. Operating from 11am until mid-evening, it positions itself as the go-to spot for those looking to enjoy a laid-back meal without straying too far from the sun. On sea days, it's not uncommon to find yourself having to queue for upwards of 20 to 30 minutes, while the food served at Taste 360 is generally enjoyable, with flavours that meet expectations for poolside food on a cruise ship, the experience of obtaining it can be very off-putting. An inclusive dining option which does deserve praise is The Keys, a brilliant spot for grabbing a bite. It's like a culinary melting pot, with everything from traditional British fish and chips to Asian dishes and classic roast dinners, if you are bored of the ones up in the horizon. And if you're starting your day here, you're in for a treat with options like a full English breakfast and American pancakes. One of the best things about the Keys is how it manages to serve up food quickly without skimping on quality. 
Whether you're in the mood for something crispy, something spicy, or just a comforting roast, the food here hits the spot every time, and you don't have to wait a lifetime to be served. The Sixth Street Diner aboard Arvia brings a new dining concept to the cruise line, aiming to capture the essence of the classic American diner. However, while the idea has promise, those who have experienced diner-style dining on other ships, such as Johnny Rockets on Royal Caribbean, might find Sixth Street Diner a bit lacking in comparison. The menu falls short in both variety and execution. Dishes often arrive lukewarm or appear to have suffered under a heat lamp, losing much of their visual and taste appeal. This is a significant drawback as the essence of diner food lies in its hearty, comforting quality, served fresh and piping hot. A major gripe with Sixth Street Diner is its inflexibility regarding menu modifications. Simple requests such as omitting waffles from the fried chicken and waffles dish or asking for a few slices of halloumi instead of the full portion are flatly denied. This lack of accommodation is disappointing and contrasts sharply with the customisable nature of true diner cuisine. The experience feels rigid, more reminiscent of a school cafeteria than an authentic American diner. On a positive note, the milkshakes stand out as the highlight of the diner, it's just unfortunate that they come at an additional charge. We've arrived at our favourite inclusive eatery on board, Olive Grove. This restaurant is so good, it could easily be a speciality restaurant. Olive Grove stands out as a favourite for inclusive dining for many on board this ship, offering a fantastic selection of Mediterranean cuisine without spending a penny. With a menu that spans from the perfectly cooked pasta to succulent kebabs, Olive Grove encapsulates the essence of the Mediterranean's rich culinary heritage, making it a must-visit for any foodie. The food is so good in the Olive Grove, it can deceive you into believing that it is a speciality restaurant. However, this level of excellence does come with its own cost and caveat. Olive Grove's popularity as the best inclusive dining option on Arvia means that securing a table can be competitive. It gets booked up incredibly quickly, therefore it's advisable to book through the cruise personaliser well in advance of your cruise. Our dining experience at Sindhu aboard P&O Arvia was regrettably a letdown. Sindhu on both Iona and Arvia have shifted from a cover charge model to a la carte pricing. With starters priced from £5.50, mains beginning at £9 and desserts from £3.50, we anticipated a meal that would justify these costs through exceptional taste and presentation. Unfortunately, what we encountered fell short of these expectations. The dishes lacked the depth of flavour and satisfaction one might find in a traditional British curry, leaving us underwhelmed. From the moment the meal began with a rather scant offering of miniature poppadoms, it seemed the tone was set. The dining experience continued to perplex with unusual combinations such as an Indian curry paired with noodles rather than rice, which strays a little too far from authenticity in our opinion. The side dishes were mediocre at best. Packaged naan bread and the somewhat watery dal lacked the richness and burst of flavour Indian cuisine is known for. A serving of onion barges or Bombay potatoes, for example, would have been a more welcome accompaniment. Small portion sizes and dishes lacking with flavour is what stands out about this restaurant. All very underwhelming and not worth the extra charge. Epicurean on Arvia positions itself as the creme de la creme of the ship's dining options, aiming to offer a premium experience at what is, in the grand scheme of cruise ship dining, a reasonable cost of £28 per person. This price point is quite appealing, especially when considering the often high costs associated with speciality restaurants at sea. Our experience at Epicurean was largely a pleasant one, with dishes like the red pepper and goat's cheese parfait and the Emmental souffle standing out for their flavour and presentation. Each course we sampled was delicious, demonstrating the kitchen's ability to deliver high quality, refined dishes as you would expect. However, despite the overall positive experience, we couldn't help but note that the menu feels somewhat stagnant. Having remained unchanged since Epicurean first made its debut on Britannia in 2015, the menu now seems a bit outdated. In a culinary world that continually evolves and where diners' preferences shift towards new and innovative dining experiences, 
this lack of menu evolution is noticeable, particularly to the most loyal of P&O cruisers. The beach house on Arvia also seems to be showing signs of wear, not in its physical setting but in the freshness of its menu and approach. The recent hike in the cover charge to £9.50 per person could have been overlooked if it promised an enhanced dining experience or an invigorated menu. However, the reality is quite the contrary, with a significant portion of the menu, around 40%, now carrying an additional charge beyond the cover. The service was noticeably slow and the food was satisfactory at best. It was interesting to see the emission of cheese from the nachos, a basic yet essential component of the dish. Upon inquiry, we were informed that the cheese is no longer included, leaving us to wonder if it was an oversight or a deliberate cost-cutting measure. Similarly, the fajitas, while nicely prepared, lacked the accompaniments of cheese, salsa and guacamole. No dish felt complete. In essence, the beach house on Arvia, with its outdated menu and incremental cost increases, no longer feels like a speciality dining venue. It's a shame, because it used to be so much better, and used to offer unquestionable value. Keel & Cow on Arvia presents itself as a great dining choice with its a la carte pricing model, promising a selection of hearty and appetising dishes. During our visit, we found most of the food to be delightful, notably the fish finger sandwich accompanied by chips and curry sauce, the mouth-watering baked camembert with freshly baked bread, and the sumptuous pecan pie. These dishes stood out for their flavour and quality, and were well worth their individual charges. However, our dining experience at Killing Cow was not without its drawbacks. The venue advises guests of a 45-minute wait time for all orders, a heads-up that does raise questions about the kitchen's capacity to handle the demand relative to the size of its galley and the number of tables it serves. Such a prolonged wait time could detract from the overall dining experience, especially for guests wishing to get to entertainment on time. A notable lapse in service quality occurred during one of our visits. We ordered the vegan kofta curry, but it arrived without the kofta. The situation was further compounded by the awkward and time-consuming process of the waiter and chef examining the dish at our table to confirm the oversight. The incident felt akin to ordering a chicken curry and discovering the absence of chicken, only to witness the staff's bafflement over its whereabouts. Clearly, the chef thought he could cook the dish and thought we wouldn't notice that the main ingredient was missing. All very weird. By far the best restaurant on board is Green & Co. This new dining concept is a delightful surprise, proving itself as an exceptional plant-based restaurant that transcends typical vegan dining stereotypes. Operating with an a la carte pricing model, it doesn't just cater to the vegan or vegetarian diner, it's a culinary experience that can be wholeheartedly enjoyed by anyone, regardless of their dietary preferences. The menu at Green & Co. is a testament to the creativity and skill of the chefs, with each dish crafted to showcase the depth and richness that plant-based cuisine can offer. The flavours are so well executed that even the most dedicated meat-eaters might find themselves questioning whether they're really not consuming meat. This ability to fool the palate, while not the restaurant's expressed intention, speaks volumes about the quality and appeal of the food served here. For those who might still be on the fence about diving into a plant-based meal, Green & Co offers a thoughtful inclusion with its separate sushi menu. This addition ensures that all guests can find something to their taste, making the restaurant a versatile dining option. Green & Co was the one restaurant aboard Arvia where we encountered no issues trying to secure a reservation. This ease of booking, combined with the high quality of the dining experience, made it a standout choice during our cruise, and is the one we would recommend to anyone with an upcoming cruise on this ship. You also have other extra charge offerings, including Ripple's Ice Cream Parlour, Vistas to grab a speciality coffee, and The Glass House, a wine bar serving small plates and wine selected by p and Cruises food hero, Ollie Smith. There is no question that dining aboard Arvia offers a huge variety of dining experiences, but there seems to be a curious mix of inconsistencies that do leave us pondering the logic behind the pricing and availability of certain dishes across its range of restaurants. 
The distinction between inclusive and extra charge dining venues on board is striking. For instance, you have to pay for basic dishes like nachos at the beach house, but you are served high quality Mediterranean dishes at the Olive Grove without extra charge. It does leave us scratching our heads wondering if P&O should look at their dining strategy and value proposition. Broadly speaking, the pricing at the ship's speciality restaurants is competitive, especially when benchmarked against similar venues on other cruise lines. This aspect of dining on Arvia does merit appreciation, offering passengers options that are, by and large, good value for money. However, the challenge of securing reservations at these speciality restaurants cannot be overstated. Except for Green & Co, which seem to always have availability, attempting to reserve a table at other venues upon boarding is likely to end in disappointment. Booking your speciality restaurants weeks in advance of your cruise is essential on this ship. Daytime activities aboard Arvia cater to a broad spectrum of interests, from swimming pools to immersive entertainment experiences. The ship boasts four swimming pools and a mind-blowing 20 whirlpools, including an impressive eight on the promenade deck. While these amenities are a highlight for many, especially when sailing to warmer climates like the Caribbean, it's inevitable that they are going to become crowded, especially on sea days. For families, Splash Valley offers a dedicated area for children to enjoy, positioned conveniently near the Altitude Skywalk. It costs £7.50 for adults and £2.50 for children for a walk along the Skywalk, which seems to be quite expensive, especially when you consider the suspension bridge on MSC ships is free, and MSC are renowned for penny-pinching in any way they can. The Oasis Spa provides a tranquil escape with its thermal suite, complete with steam rooms, sauna and a hydrotherapy pool, all available for £39 per person per day. This price point is remarkably reasonable, given the quality of facilities on offer. Yet as with many of Arvia's more popular attractions, securing a spot without early booking can be challenging. The Oasis Spa also features a hair and beauty salon, and countless treatment rooms where you can have anything from facials to massages. The prices for these treatments are quite steep compared to land-based prices, but competitive when compared to other cruise lines. Ocean Studio stands out as a cinematic haven at sea, featuring four screens and offering the latest blockbuster movies. The comfort and design of this venue set it apart as one of the most impressive cinemas found on a cruise ship, providing an ideal retreat for film enthusiasts and an added distraction for children. Mission Control presents Arvia's own escape room experience, priced at £20 per person for adults and £10 for children. This attraction adds an intriguing element to the ship's diverse activity roster, appealing to guests looking for a unique and engaging activity. However, the quest for a simple sunbed in the sun and near a bar epitomises a common challenge aboard Arvia. Securing a spot requires an almost pre-dawn effort, with a a 5am wake-up call not uncommon for the determined to claim a poolside location. By 7am, the prospect of finding even a single sunbed is verging on impossible, underscoring the ship's struggle once again to accommodate its high capacity. The retreat offers a more exclusive escape from the crowds, yet its popularity means it can be fully booked within hours of embarkation. The retreat is a really nice space, and costs £429 for a two-week cruise, which works out around £30 per person per day, which is pretty reasonable. Children are well catered for in Arvia, with a plethora of activities designed to keep younger guests entertained throughout their voyage. An essential highlight for families is the Reef, the dedicated children's club on Arvia, catering to ages 2 to 17. This facility is a fantastic inclusion in the cruise fair, offering a wide range of activities tailored to different age groups under the supervision of experienced staff. From arts and crafts to sports and games, the reef ensures that children have a stimulating and enjoyable time, allowing parents to relax knowing their kids are in good hands. However, it's worth noting that even the reef, much like other popular amenities on the ship, can reach its capacity quickly, especially during peak periods like school holidays. This makes it imperative for families to book their children into the club as soon as they board the ship to avoid disappointment. 
evening entertainment aboard Arvia is not in short supply, which can just about cater to a wide range of tastes and preferences. The shows in the Headliners Theatre certainly don't compare to the sort of shows you get on the newer Royal Caribbean and celebrity ships, but the shows we saw weren't bad at all. The Sky Dome also hosts a variety of performances, including tribute acts and other stage performances, under its impressive retractable roof. However, it's worth noting that the sound system in the Sky Dome can sometimes detract from the overall experience. The acoustics create an echoey environment, leading to music that can sound distorted, which may disappoint those expecting the crystal clear sound quality found in other venues on the ship, such as the theatre and clubhouse. For those who prefer a more laid-back evening, there are musicians performing at various bars such as the Crow's Nest. These bars and lounges provide a more subdued but equally enjoyable entertainment, providing guests with a sophisticated atmosphere for guests to relax and unwind with a fancy cocktail, enjoying the melodies as a backdrop to their conversations. Alternative entertainment options aboard Arvia include the 710 Club, which exudes the charm of a speakeasy bar, providing an intimate venue for enjoying music and drinks in a more secluded setting. The Limelight Club, while requiring an extra charge of between £25 and £35 depending on the performer, offers a unique experience that combines a three-course meal with entertainment, featuring performances from renowned artists such as Gareth Gates in a cabaret-style environment. This remains an entertainment venue we're yet to try, but most reviews seem quite complimentary, more for the entertainment than the food. The service aboard Arvia really wasn't good. In fact, it's one of the worst experiences we've had. A defining element of cruising is the exceptional service that makes each passenger feel special and well cared for. Interactions with our cabin steward exemplified this shortfall. Rather than the warm, friendly attitude we've come to expect from cabin stewards in the past, our cabin steward on Arvia would sooner dart into a cabin rather than say hello to us if we passed him in the corridor. Even asking him for some extra clothes hangers was met with, you will have to wait, I'm busy. Similarly, the service received at various bars and restaurants on board left much to be desired. Requests for slight modifications to dishes or drinks to suit personal preferences were often declined outright. Even asking to make a sex on the beach without alcohol was met with no we can't. Such inflexibility and apparent unwillingness to accommodate simple requests contribute to a service experience that feels rigid and impersonal rather than the tailored and attentive approach that defines cruising. Over the course of the two weeks aboard Arvia, the sense of crew members striving to go above and beyond was notably absent. This was not just about fulfilling basic duties, but the overall impression that the crew's enthusiasm and care for guest satisfaction were markedly lacking. Instances where crew members demonstrated genuine interest or went the extra mile for guests were not observed in the entire two weeks we were on board. You can't help but wonder if these service issues lie in the operational challenges of managing a ship as large and as crowded as Arvia. The decision to scrap tipping may also play a role in the crew's morale and consequently their interactions with passengers. It raises the question of whether the crew are feeling the strain of being overworked and perhaps underappreciated impacting their ability to deliver the level of service that P&O cruises used to be known for. Drink packages. Should you or shouldn't you? If you want to find out every bit of detail regarding the P&O drink packages so you can make an informed decision, make sure you check out our P&O Cruises drink package video in the top right hand corner now. Staying connected aboard Arvia wasn't as bad as you might think, although the My Holiday app is hopeless and unreliable. P&O refer to it as an app, but it's actually a basic web page, serving as the central hub for managing your online experience while at sea. You can't help but wonder why P&O Cruises haven't got their own app in the same way that other carnival brands do, including Holland America, Princess and the fun ships themselves. There are two primary connectivity packages available on Arvia, the Essential and the Ultimate packages. The Essential package, priced at £12 per day with a cruise plan or £18 per day without, promises to cover all your basic satellite internet needs. 
which includes social media, web browsing and internet messaging, including WhatsApp and email. For those requiring a more robust online experience, the Ultimate Package, which costs £18 per day with a cruise plan or £24 per day without, offers a faster and more comprehensive internet experience. This package is designed for passengers looking to enjoy a wider range of online activities, such as video chats and streaming of movies and music. It's worth noting that Wi-Fi connectivity aboard P&O ships, including Avia, has seen significant improvements following the switch to Starlink as their main internet provider. This change has addressed many of the speed and reliability issues that have historically plagued internet service at sea with P&O, offering passengers a much improved online experience. There's no doubt that P&O Avia is a beautiful cruise ship, striking from virtually every angle and with an impressive array of amenities, dining options and activities designed to cater to a wide range of preferences and interests with British cruisers. However, our cruise aboard Avia was marred by a series of issues that cast a shadow over its brighter aspects. The service, a cornerstone of the cruising experience, frequently fell below expectations, with instances of unfriendly interactions and a palpable lack of enthusiasm from the crew. Dining, while varied, revealed inconsistencies in quality and service across both inclusive and extra charge venues, leading to confusion about the overall value proposition. The challenges in securing reservations for dining, activities and even sunbeds underscore a broader issue of capacity management. With the ship forever feeling overcrowded and unable to accommodate guests' needs comfortably. These operational shortcomings, coupled with the reliance on a clunky virtual queuing system, unfriendly crew, the need for early 5 am wake up calls to secure a sun lounger, significantly detract from the leisure and relaxation that should define a cruise to the Caribbean. In conclusion, there are just too many problems aboard Avia and with PO cruises and it does feel that the company is tone-deaf to any feedback or criticism. These challenges, significant enough to impact our overall enjoyment, lead us to the decision that it isn't a cruise line we would want to cruise with again. The truth of the matter is that there is much better options out there. If you're a first-time cruiser on this ship, don't go thinking that this is what cruising is, but rather what cruising shouldn't be.